Hey everybody, welcome to Mammoth Interactive's YouTube channel. First of all, I want to thank you for watching this video. And remember that this channel doesn't do Patreon, instead we sell our digital courses down below. And every single dollar that we get from the products you buy below goes into making more content. The best way to help out this channel and Mammoth Interactive is to subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. Get thousands of hours and hundreds of courses for a low, low price down below. We have a monthly option and a yearly option. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in the video. Okay, we are uh, going to just go ahead and sort of uh, play around with the sculpting or sculpting uh, option in Blender. Now to do that, you can either go into a new file like this and just simply click over on the top bar. There's like a sculpting option. Just click on that tab, it'll turn this whole section into a sculpted area for you to sort of work with. Uh, but as you can see right here, you can't really sculpt this because this object has a really low poly count. And to sort of increase the amount of poly counts, you would need to go over into your object here, uh, go in edit mode, right click, subdivide, and just go shift R, shift R, shift R. And that will give you a high poly count for your sort of uh, object right here. Then you switch over, over into the sculpting section and you should be able to sort of play around with the sculpt tools or that you can see on the left side. But another way to kind of just get a default sculpt uh, sort of uh, object is to just start off by clicking on con command N or whatever uh, key that you use to create new file, maybe control. Uh, you can go over there, control N, command N, sculpting uh, right here, just turn that on and discard the changes because we, we didn't want to save anything. As you can see right here, you start off with this object right here now, which is a sphere. Now the sphere is fairly high in its uh, polygon, polygon count, which as you can see in the bottom right corner, there are 24,578 vertices or 24,576 faces, uh, which means this object is actually quite high in polygons. So you can actually kind of play around with this, kind of sculpt around and mess around with this. But you'll also notice that with the new file uh, set in uh, sculpting mode, you don't have the options up top anymore. They sort of streamline everything for you to work in sculpting. There's sculpting and shading, which you can kind of test around with the uh, lighting of your object, or not lighting, more like the textures itself, where we're going to be mainly working in sculpting here. If you do want to slightly change around your object's sort of shape, or like basic default shape, you can go over into the little plus uh, or add workspace icon right here, this little button, just click on that. You can go again uh, into the general section and set a layout right there, which is the default that you usually see. As you can see right here, this is the sphere. Now, if you worked in Blender before, all you have to do is just go into edit mode and check it out. And as you can see, it's fully orange. That is because this thing is crazy high in its uh, sort of polygon count. And it's actually a sort of square-like structure. As you can see, there's like a corner here, corner here, corner here, somewhere where we drew and they just made it into a spherical shape. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much uh, straightforward and easy to uh, sort of start with when you're sort of working towards uh, actually working in sculpting. Anyways, go back in here and the camera controls basically are the same. Just use middle mouse click to kind of orbit around the object. Shift click with middle mouse to kind of go side to side. Zoom in and out by just scrolling. And it is pretty easy to navigate around. Uh, some of the basic tools right here, or actually all the brush types are on your uh, far left. You can kind of open this up a little to make it a little bit more uh, less compact so you can actually just select things without needing to scroll downwards. If you don't like that, you can just simply go back to the sort of little zip down menu here, just like press it back and you can just like scroll down. 
But yeah, I'd rather have this like slightly over here so we can kind of select it just at a faster uh, speed. Uh, what else? There is the paintbrush options on the far right or your brush options. So like here, you if you click on this little screwdriver and wrench, this is the sort of a brush options here. You have the basic brush that you selected. Uh, and you also have the options to sort of change up its radius. So right now, as you can see, it's like this big. You can just sort of zip this up, and it'll become this big. You can also, you probably also notice that this went up. This is also that same section over here uh, on top of the bar. You can change up the radius, you can change up the strength, and there's additional options here and there. But yeah, those are just some of the basics to uh, so we play around in sculpt mode. Uh, for now, let's just take a short break and come back to this later. Okay, so we're back again, and I'm just going to show you some of the basic tools that you'll be needing. Uh, let's actually start off by resetting our scene. I'm just going to go into new files, sculpting, discard everything, and we're left with a clean uh, sort of sphere right here. Now, as you can see, we have multiple options. Well, the basic ones you'll be using the most will probably be draw and smooth, which is this one right here. Now to draw, you just, well, click on that or the option is uh, X. Uh, as you can see right here, we just sort of draw something and currently it's set to mirror right here. Uh, you can turn mirroring off by simply going to, I believe it's right over here, this little top button. It's set to X axis. Turn it off, it'll become asymmetrical. You don't have to worry about like things being mirrored. Just undo that. You can also, you know, play around with the Y axis as well. And, well, I guess it's really mirror on that side. Oh, wait, actually it is mirrored over there. This is the Y axis. Uh, but yeah, you got that, you got the Z axis, you can mirror all over, you can create weird, unnatural patterns on the surfaces of your objects, like so. Uh, but I'm just going to set it and keep it to the X axis. Uh, but yeah, like I said, draw is your friend. There is, the other friend is the smooth option, which if you click on shift on any of the different uh, brushes right here, it will automatically go into the sh uh, well, the smooth option right here. Just hold on to shift, and as you can see, if you smooth it, it'll kind of just blend certain areas together, smooths it out. So like, if things aren't too jarring, like so, just kind of, it's kind of like more of a blur tool. Uh, it helps with covering up those weird sort of uh, sharp polygon, uh, kind of uh, surfaces right there. But yeah, as you can see, easy to work with. Then you get other options like clay strips. It's just more kind of uh, different types of design uh, choices right here. Uh, it's different brush strokes. You got inflate, it just bubbles up certain surfaces. Uh, you can increase the strength and it will sort of bubble up. And crease tool is a fairly uh, simple thing to use as well. It kind of cuts and creates creases for like sharp corners. Maybe you're creating a face and you want to like play around with the, uh, I guess, the lips of your character, and you just want to you know create a little little smile on the sides. You don't want to use too much strength, kind of you know blurring this piece out right here. But yeah, it's pretty simple to use. Then you get the other options like uh, where their clay it just basically gives you the option to kind of throw on more surface on or more surface uh, areas onto the uh, section that you're already playing right now. Uh, the layer option, it can kind of create, uh, it, it's kind of similar to the clay option, but more with more strength, as you can see right here, you kind of just cool things on top of each other. Uh, you can increase the strength and the sort of height at which you want to sort of stack a new sort of surface layer. As you can see right here, there's like a one it's set to 0.4 the default. You can increase to like one meter. If you draw this, it should go like, go way up right here. And yeah, 
Let's kind of undo that. I'm just going to set this back to like 0.4. And then you have like, I guess, blob. It's kind of similar to the, uh, the inflate option. You can kind of change the pinch up right here. Because uh, right now it's set to 0.5. It doesn't really pull up into like a little blob. Well, kind of does if you like swirl a little bit more. We can increase the pinch, as you can see right here. Increase the strength to 100%. And we can create like little balls around certain areas right there. But yeah, there you go. Now what was I going to go with? Right, we have a smooth, which we don't have to worry about anything. Well, you can use the smooth tool by itself by click on the S. And it should just like sort of smooth things out like so. You can increase and decrease the amount of strength you're going to use for your sh uh, the smooth tool by using it here. You increase the size and just smooth things over. Flatten, basically, like it says, it just flattens surfaces. I can flatten this section, kind of fix up how it looks. Uh, looks over here instead of having like sharp corners everything is just flattened like so you got scrape basically just cuts out certain areas uh, like I think I should probably increase the size let's just go like I don't know 385 or 358 and eh, pretty big we got the strength of 0.5 so as you can see it just sort of slowly cuts away uh, you got fill you can kind of just uh, sort of throw on uh, certain sections or like additional sort of uh, pieces or probably goes onto that uh, the holes that you've created. I should probably decrease this to kind of demonstrate that. And as you can see right here, it kind of just uh, it really just does like a additional sort of uh, layer right here in the the little creases or little hole areas that you've created. You can kind of see it like the. Uh, the example right here in the brush section. Uh, then you get like options like pinch. You can create uh, pinched layers, but I guess our brush size is a little bit too big right here. It's kind of having a hard time grabbing. Uh, also, I should probably increase the strength as well. As you can see right here, it's kind of pinching things together. That's better right there. And yeah, that's like one of the options that you can play around with different, multiple, like different ways of deformation. Uh, you get grab tool, sort of grabs the surface and you can pull it in whichever direction you want. Uh, let's grab like this guy, as you can see right here, we got 100% strength, so it's just going to grab it all the way. Uh, if we decrease this, you can kind of pluck at pieces it doesn't like pull all the way and it's like less strength so it's slower just gonna put this back in place we got our thumb it's just think of it as like this piece is clay and you're just smushing it with your thumb you're kind of pulling uh, certain places right here and there okay that's a little bit too much but like just slowly move it i'm actually gonna get closer because the sort of size of the brush stays the same uh while the object well increases the size, this brush is still like uh, here at this little tiny space right here. Anyways, as you can see, we're kind of pulling right here. Also, I guess the polygon itself, the object, isn't that high because right, right now, if you sort of push it, it, it creates these sharpened deforms, which uh, is the sign that tells you that your object is slightly uh, low in the polygon count side. Well, it's pretty high to us right now because it looks pretty smooth, but some of these parts are so like jagged, sharp. It's telling you that it is just slightly on the low side. Anyways, you got other options like rotate. You can kind of spin certain things, but uh, I can't really see that because our brush is kind of small. Let's go like grab one of these guys, kind of rotate this. You can kind of play around, kind of just rotates from that center like so undo it basically wherever I grab and you can like rotate that certain section like right here you just kind of move around uh, as much as you can but that like increases the amount of rotations you can like, ro rotate it back like so it's pretty simple easy to use you get like the snake hook 
It's kind of similar to the uh, grab option, but uh, yeah, we should probably decrease the amount right here. Spank hook basically just gives you the option to kind of drag it as almost as far as you want, pretty much. I'm just going to shrink this back in place, but you got other options here to kind of, you know, play around with. Uh, kind of just changes up your options here, as you can see in like the brush example again. You get a nudge, similar to thumb. Uh, it kind of just gives you the option to kind of push and smooth things together. But it's a little bit harder to do. You kind of need to like do it more times, kind of push things together. Uh, it's a fairly decent uh, tool to use when you're trying to. I guess compress certain things together, but you don't want to move them all at once. Then you have like other options here. Simplify basically uh, makes your object like uh, lower in like a polygon count. Uh, but we're not gonna do anything with that right now. We're just gonna just simply go wild with you know actually sculpting the objects. You got mask. You can kind of just mask off certain areas so that. You can't affect them, as you can see right here. That helps you with uh, you know, isolating certain uh, sections. You have like box mask. You can kind of like just select certain areas that you want to. Uh, well, mask. You can deselect that. So box hide, or like hide those certain areas right there. I'm just gonna undo that. Go back into box mask and uh, hold on to control to sort of deselect it and yeah it's pretty straightforward now the box hide is kind of more situational like I feel like most of the time when I'm just using masks I don't need to hide anything I only use it if like there's something that's covering a certain object that I need to get to I might use a box hide and kind of just hide the object or a certain specific area uh, of that object. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for the introduction of those tools right here. Uh, we'll sort of show you some of the short like hotkeys of uh, you know the, the, the workflow of like changing brushes, brush size, strengths uh, in the next video. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you well, in the next video. Okay, we're back again, and we are just going to do a short intro on uh, the sort of specific hotkeys that you can kind of play with when you're working with your uh, brushes over here, or sort of working uh, more like the workflow when you're trying to create something uh, while sculpting here. Uh, anyways, first off, let's just go with the basic default brush, because, uh, well, you're going to just be using this mainly most of the time. And that and the uh, smooth tool. Well, technically, if you hold on to shift, it just switches over into a smooth tool anyways. Uh, but yeah, let's go and sort of play around with this. So like, if you go and click on right click, you have these options right here. It just instantly brings up this menu here, pops into your work area here. So you don't have to go up over here. Gonna change up the strengths or radiuses. Well, you can still do it right here anyways. But like, it just brings it to you here so you can just like increase the sort of uh, size of your brush you right click just decrease the amount you can increase strength over here as well also uh, you can there's another option of clicking on F F basically just increases your the radius of your brush right there it's even faster when compared to right clicking and then sort of doing it here, but it's more accurate if you were to increase your uh, brush size here because you can just type it in right here. Well, as when you sort of uh, click on the F, it's more like, you know, uh, it's, you're, you're eyeballing it right here. It's like freehand sort of stretching of the brush size. You can kind of see it on the top left right there. You can, you know, Kind of gauge how much or how large you want the brush to be but again it's not going to be you know like exact on like how big a certain brush is at so like sometimes you, you want to do that you can do that it's like different ways of like sort of uh switching around certain things you also get the option of uh switching this let's go shift f 
And as you can see, you can change up your strength here. It's like, again, a different option, a different way of like playing around with your uh, the, the hockey right here or like uh, playing around in your workflow. You can sort of just click a shift F, manually do like a little quick switch in like the, uh, the strength of your brush, like so. And yeah, again, you just want to pre precise right here do this right here increase auto smooth here as well in case you want to you want to do less work with like you know smoothing and increase this to like I don't know, one and it just smooths things out without having them you know blarb out too much and yeah that's pretty much it for that it's just really a quick little short info on how to sort of play around while like yeah you know, switching around your like workflow or your uh, make it faster for yourself when it comes to sort of uh, sculpting on the go right here. Uh, but yeah, those are just basic options of sort of messing with uh, things around here and there. And uh, that is pretty much it for that. Now you basically have the tools and knowledge to like sculpt something. You can just go ahead and do that because again, all you gotta do is just use a basic brush and in like smooth mode and you should be able to sculpt some things uh ah okay there's an additional sort of hockey that which i forgot to uh relay which is the sort of invert key so like right now if i were to paint it's just gonna sort of pull out or sort of add on to our object here if you want to subtract it Normally, you'd have to like go over here and click on subtract. When you paint, it'll start subtracting, but I feel like that's way too slow. So, all you have to do is just like hold on to control and it should just invert your brush right here and you can just paint it that way. Let go and you can go back into adding uh, the object or like adding uh, additional sort of surfaces to your object right here. And yeah. That is pretty much it. That's like one of the main sort of uh, keys that you need to like know when you're working in sculpting. And right now it's pretty much just all, all up to your imagination of what you want to build, kind of create right here. Uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next few videos. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this course. If you want to watch the rest of the course, the link is down below. Not only will you get the access to this course, but you'll get access to a lot of other courses in a huge bundle. And it's on sale today. So buy it before the sale ends. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.